and we're back. Oh, Season my three. Goodness. The Devo and Chris Joe show. But hey, first off, yes, man, uh, let, yes, let's, uh, uh, let, let's thank Galaxy, uh, Brian, Jordan, <laughs> Pauly, um, and then our uh, our new sponsor, Flintstone. You know, it, uh, Flintstone Cannabis Company over there on Walton Street. We're not saying you have to indulge, but if you do, you probably want to go over to Flintstone Cannabis Company and get you something and get your mind right. So shout out to Flintstone um, for helping us out because without them, we wouldn't be having the show. Uh, 100% shout out to Flintstone again. Long day, go to Flintstone. You little, <laughs> you little pissed off about something, go to Flintstone. I'll tell you what, <laughs> they'll get you right, get you elevated. Get you elevated. So, so look, Joe, man, we, it's been a little bit. Um, I'm happy to be back. Bit, man. I missed you, my brother. I missed you, man. I missed you. I'll miss you too, man. But let, let's update the public on, on what's been going on um, in, in our lives, man. I know we both had a lot going on, have a lot going on. And uh, so kind of tell me what's going on with you, you with the coaching job. We, 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 ch- we chatted a little bit before the show about, um, yes, sir. I mean, I guess it's some exciting news for you, not so much for, the other guy, but, uh, you know, you got a lot going on, man. So kind of update us on what's going on in life. So life, first and foremost, I got, uh, my, my newborn Paris Joseph, you know, and I, and I, heard, I heard her in the background. Shout out to Paris. You you in the background. Yeah. Paris, uh, is definitely a, a beautiful baby girl, uh, doing what babies do, crying and doing what she's supposed to do, but she's beautiful, born September 22nd. So I've been fairly busy at home and uh, taking care of her and after days of work, coming in, taking the night shift. Uh, you know, I, I try to, you know, beat my time changing diapers. I, I do it treated like a pit stop, you know, real quick. I try to beat my time every time because, you know, I try to get it done as quickly as possible. But it's been amazing. You know, uh, being a father is definitely first on my list of things that I enjoy being and doing in this, in this life. So very blessed to have her, uh, a part of our family. Um, so that's been great, but from a basketball standpoint, everybody, uh, to, to update everybody in July, I, um, got the coaching job at McGill university as lead assistant. It's been going great. Um, you know, enjoying the, the challenges that coaches bring and, and the ups and the downs of winning, losing, and all those things. And just recently, I was I had to take the lead for the last three games. Um, head coach was was away with some personal things going on, and so I was I had to you know step up as lead assistant and, and be I guess the the stand in coach uh, for the time being. I was able in those three games get us our first win of the season, which was big time uh, against one of the better teams in the league. They were five and zero at the time. We were zero and four or in five. And so getting that win was big. We got it on our home court. It was, it was great atmosphere. And, and, you know, you love being a part of those things, you know, those type of games where we ended up winning by two. You think about it as a player, a lot of people were asking, were you nervous? And I'm like, nah, man, I wasn't nervous. It's, you know, I have trained my mind to be a part of these situations for a long time. Uh, being a player, playing in, in hostile environments and being in situations from, college to playing overseas and things like that. So I think I've been trained to stay pretty poised in high intense situations. Um, so it's been, it's been, it's been great, man. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this right here, uh, leads to different opportunities in the near future. And by near, I mean, a couple years down the line, I'm enjoying my, my situation here at McGill, but ultimately, you know, what would be the dream for Joe would be getting back up on the hill one day and, and coaching and making it up and, and doing it twice, doing it once as a player from Canada to Cuse and doing it once as a coach, man, that'd be great. And that'd be a, a story to tell, you know what I mean? So things have been going good in life, in my, in my job world, in my everyday life. Uh, my kids are doing great. I'm thriving. My kids are healthy. Um, and I can't, you know, with the, there's madness going on in the world around us daily. So those are the things that are most important that, you know, you got to make sure you remember every day that we're blessed. Every day above ground is a good one. And, um, you know, just enjoy life's journeys, man, the ups and the downs and take it with a grain of salt. Absolutely. So so for those who don't know, uh, you know, he's at McGill University in Canada. Kind of give a quick background on McGill <laughs> University, uh, because obviously, 
um, we're, we're in the States, Joe. McGill, we're, we're yeah. the <laughs> McGill, McGill is top notch, man. Uh, probably top 10 educational, you know, institution in North America. You know, it's considered the Canada's Harvard. Um, and, you know, kids who go here, they're studying, you know, obviously you get a degree from, from, from I was going to say Harvard, but from McGill, you're going to be well off in life afterwards. You know, you get a degree there, you can get to hop into a great job. We got kids on the team, uh, engineering, finance, and law school, and they're still balancing that. The true definition of student athlete, they're, they're doing up to 30 hours of schooling, you know, and still making time to work out and come to practice and try to balance that life where, you know, I can't say that I'd be able to do the same. That's a lot of schooling. You know what I mean? And and, and yeah, it's, it's much I different. Do it. I'm, I'm not gonna do it. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So McGill is a great, great institution. Um, like I said, one of the best in North America. And you come through these doors and you leave with a degree. Chiching. I'm telling you, everything's going to be good. Once you, once you graduate, you got that paper saying you got that degree from McGill, you'll be well off. So, um, you know, we do we, we play in the league with just five teams in Quebec, but we, we, we um, play for a chance to go to nationals where we play against all the other teams from, you know, the, the West Coast, so the BC, Saskatchewan, obviously the Ontarios. So that's what we're fighting for every day, um, every day in practice, every game. Like that's our goal is to be national champions. Um, so provincial champions would be cool. You could win your, your conference, but the goal is obviously to be the best in Canada. And me being here at McGill, that's obviously my goal is to get these guys ready to compete at that level. I think what I bring to the, to the program is just my – um, obviously my energy on a daily, on a daily basis, but just my knowledge of the game and being in the places that I've been and learning from some of the coaches. I think, I think, you know, thinking about coach Bayheim, who's a hall of famer, doc rivers, who will be one Ty Lue, who will be one Jason Kidd, who I had a stint with will be one is one player coach. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just all the basketball minds that I've been able to be around, um, in my basketball journey and being able to pour into these kids, um, is great, even from a player standpoint. You know, there's some things that I teach these kids that they think they're learning from me, but really they're learning it from KG because that's something he taught me in 2012. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's just knowing these things and, and getting them ahead of the game, you know, to where at this age I didn't know certain things. So I want you to learn this valuable information to become the best player you can become. So I think that's where my position and my, my job is very important. It's just to teach these kids how to have that pro mindset, you know what I mean? And, and take things seriously. Although you're here, you're a great student. We're here to compete. We're here to win. We're all competitors at the end of the day. So I'm trying to get these kids prepped up as best as I can on a daily basis. And, and Joe, we talked about it before, <clears throat> before the show. Uh, and I want you to touch on it a little bit. It, some of the challenges, because like you said, McGill, when they go to that school, I mean, their main focus would be the education, whether it be in finance exactly. or engineering whatever it may be. So, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, the focus isn't a hundred percent basketball. They know, you know, yep. when, when they're done with basketball here, that's probably it. You know what I mean? They're, they're probably not going to be <laughs> playing anymore. So what's the challenges, you know, for you as a coach, you know, trying to get them motivated to, to, to win games, to play exactly. hard and, and just compete at a high level. That's it, man. You said you hit on the nose. Like we said, you know, when, when we were in school, our motivation was obviously we want to get to the league. We were trying to get our parents out of a, you know, sticky situation back home. Our family, we yeah. want to help grandma, whoever it may be. So our motivation daily when we woke up to go grind was I'm trying to be the best. Obviously, playing in the Big East was one thing already. You want to be the best in the, in the, in the conference, but ultimately you're trying to become a pro. You're trying to go to the league. You know, let's face it, when we go to Syracuse, the Dukes, the Yukons, we're not going into school thinking I'm going overseas. We're going into school thinking I'm going to the to the association. And so our motivation every day was that's what we're fighting for. That's what we're getting. That's where we want to get to. And our coaches knew that about us and they pushed us to those limits as well. You know what I mean? Coach Hop, Coach Murph, you know, yeah. Coach Bayheim, Red, you know, the, these guys were pushing us to those limits because they knew what our goals were. So they were going to help us in every way possible to reach those goals. So when you come to McGill, like you said, a lot of these kids don't have dreams of becoming NBA players or, or going overseas. Um, so for me, it's just making sure they know, hey, you're here for whether you're in your last year or your first year. You're a competitor. You're here for, you didn't come here to just lose. I could only imagine you're, you're playing this sport because you love it for one. 
and through right. your competitor. So every day, just motivating these guys and, and getting them fired up just to be excited to get in the gym, fired up to be in practice. Um, again, keep holding them accountable. If you're bullshitting, nah, that's bullshit. You can't do that. Like, I, I don't think about them not wanting to be pros. I'm approaching it like you want to go to play pro because that would make us a better team. That would make you a better player. And then we're all going to, like, you being a better player, everybody getting better is in turn going to make us a better team, right? So me just taking that approach instead of thinking, you know, these guys don't really want to go pro after, so maybe I don't have to work them as hard or get on them for not making the right cut or get on them for not getting all the way to the baseline on the play. Nah, details matter. We're trying to win. We're trying to be the best team in Canada. And at the end of the day, we need all of those, all 14 of those guys. We need them to, to reach our certain goals that we have for a t as a team. So getting them motivated, bro, is, is my approach is, nah, fuck it. Like, we're going to go hard no matter what. When we're working out, you're, I'm going to treat you like you're, you're trying to get, go lottery. You know what I'm saying? Facts, That's how I'm approaching facts. it because at the end of the day, I, can't, I don't know any different. You know what I'm saying? I don't know any different. This is what I know, and this is exactly what I'm teaching them and showing them. Yeah, you, and, and you're one of the greatest motivators I've been around, but just one of the greatest people. But, it, it, you know, you got a special talent because you're able to connect with these kids on, on a level that a lot of people say aren't aren't able to connect with because one because you've done it and then you know secondly you're just you know you have that you have that in you you have that ability to be able to reach people which is not a lot of people have that bro and, and i think w what you're talking about as far as you know getting these kids to compete at a high level it, it, yeah it's going to help them on the basketball court but it's going to help them in life right we, we talk mm -hmm. Joe, camps together we talk about that all the time like uh, you know a lot of the kids that come and, and do the camps with you you're not going to play college basketball, you, yeah. let alone pro, right? You're, you're not. So, but right. the lessons that, have, that, that we're teaching and that we're, you know, trying to get across to you is for life. You know what I'm saying? Like these kids, when you nah, go no into question. yeah, financial situation, what institution or uh, uh, engineering, it could, it could get stressful, you know, in that. So it, the, nah, they can sure. go back to the lessons and the habits that you taught them and be able to put of them course, into use. Bro. Of you know, course, forward, because at right? the end of the day, in your field, at the end of the day, no matter what your field is, dog, you want to be the best. You're not going to settle for yeah. being, you know, mediocre in whatever you do. So I'm not going to allow you to be mediocre or settle for less when we're all out here on this basketball court. Especially, you know, this is what I'm passionate about. But at the end of the day, like you said, those li those lessons are going to, if you're going to, if you want to be a lawyer, don't you want to be the best lawyer? If you're going to be an engineer, don't you want to be the best engineer? And so on and so forth. I don't think that these kids want to go into their field, you know, not great. They want to be great. They want to be at the top of their law firm or whatever it may be, open up their own one day. So just like you said, the, the mindset that you have to have to do that, it starts right there on that basketball court. So that'll help these kids, mot that motivation and these life lessons. And again, like we always say, they might not get it today, but tomorrow they'll realize like, oh shit, like what, what I learned six years ago, I'm applying today. And at the end of the day, that's all you want is for the message to click. Might not click immediately, but as long as it clicks one day and you get that message that says, I appreciate you, coach. You know you did your job. It means everything, but what you're doing, you're planting that seed. You're planting that seed in the back of their yep. head, you know what I mean? And then eventually, like you said, over time it grows and then they get it. Hey, man, Coach Joe told me this away way long time ago you know what i mean but now and it takes it takes you know different amount of time for, for everyone's different you know what i mean to be able to get it or Facts. to be able to, to to really click so and uh i guess just a little bit of update about what's going on with me um you know you see ed23 who's baby you know we represent all the time yes sir uh, <laughs> same same type of thing you know we've been having the camps and clinics um again trying to teach the habits and lessons that you need and life skills that you need to be successful not only in sport but in life and, and joe we've been a part of of sports our whole life and, and the habits and the lessons that we learn you know consistency determination you know working through adversity working with others um you know being a good teammate you, you need all this stuff in life you know mm -hmm. so that's that's the stuff that we're preaching at these camps um you know i've been um blessed enough to be able to also launch a, a nonprofit foundation ed23 foundation uh you know yeah salute i appreciate you brother yeah you already know you know We've been trying to do a lot of stuff in the community for a long time as far as, you know, giving back with uh, turkey drives and uh, sneaker and cleats events. Um, shout out to my guy Latavius Murray, Mike Poyer, Heart and Tay Train Foundation for always supporting. Um, so it, it, I just thought it was time to, 
you know, get this nonprofit launched. And, and um, we've been doing it on a smaller scale. Um, and it's never really small when you're helping people. You know, it's, it's, it's always a big thing. 100%. But we wanted to be able to help more people and, and, and impact more people. And then this foundation, EDT, ED23 Foundation, is going to uh, allow us to do that on, on a larger scale. Um, I got, you know, some great people involved. I got a great board. Uh, we just finished um, – our last uh, uh, turkey drive um, down on the south yes, side sir. of Syracuse at, at the Boys and Girls Club. Um, we had handed out 500 uh, turkey dinners to, to families in the Cus, and um, you know, <clears throat> hopefully, hopefully next year, you know, we we go from you know 500 to uh, to 800. You know, we started. This was a six yeah. year Joe. This is our six year doing it. In the first year, uh, we started. Uh, in the back of the rescue mission on, on the west side, handed out, I think we handed out 100 to 150 turkeys. Uh, shout out to my guy, Todd Roosh, PPS, Printing and Promotional Solutions. Shout out, shout out to Todd. That's my guy. Todd, Todd. Todd's like none other, man. If you if you know my guy Todd, uh, and you know what type of person he is, man. He's uh, he, he's a special dude. But um, that's where it started, and, and now from year one to year six, going from 100 to to 500, not only turkeys but turkey dinners, and um, we had you know 50 volunteers out there, and 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 that's the big thing that you know I'm trying to preach is. Yeah, we're putting this stuff out there. Yeah, we're we're trying to help people, but but also what we're trying to do is inspire, uh, motivate, and, and connect others to do the same thing. Because Joe, when we have these events, there's people from all all you know different areas coming together, never met each other, uh, and, and then when they and they come together, connect and talk, you know, now they they you know come with an idea where they want to do their own thing, and 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 that's how it really you know starts. It's you know, wrong. we're doing it here yeah. now. They want to go a turkey driver themselves and that's how you build a community man like a a, 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 yeah. a thriving community you know people who want to help each other uh, people who want to connect with each other and help and you know the ed23 foundation that's what we're about man so you know we we got a lot going on this, e. yeah where, where do you where, so obviously me knowing you personally you know what i mean like i know the type of heart that you had um you know as a person you know people at those times would identify you as a basketball player. Obviously us being teammates, being brothers, I, I got to know you personally, uh, you know, early as a freshman, but just with the Turkey drive and the things that you've been doing in the community, um, wanting to help out the, you know, businesses during COVID, where did all that come from? Where did where, like, what, what made you wake up one day and say, you know what, like I need to help these people. You know what I mean? So just, just let me know or let the people know, um, you know, where that came from, man, I always wanted to help people, uh, you know, um, and, and I'm, I'm blessed. I'm grateful to have a, a pretty good life. I, I got everything I need, Joe, as far as a place to live. I got food on the table. My girls are good. Um, you know, they're not mm -hmm. hurting for anything. Um, but it, it's a lot, it's a lot of people out here that don't have the, the, uh, <laughs> necessities that you would need, like, you know, just a uh, 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 basics, food, basic necessities. Yeah, f food on the table every single night. You know, a, a, a warm house to sleep in, uh, a different pair of socks. For real, like that's mm -hmm. some little different pair mm -hmm. of socks, no, underwear, sure. clothes. It, so, you know, I, I just wanted to do something bigger than myself. You, you know what I mean? Like I've I've been blessed to have all these things and and meet all these cool people and, and do all these different things and experience stuff. I, I wanted to be able to you know help these people who don't have those or or you know you know, get mm -hmm. some different experiences because it really like targeted on the youth. You know, we want to be everyone, but target the youth because bro, if you know Syracuse, the child poverty rate is the number one, you know, it's the highest poverty rate in the country, you know, per capita wow. in the country. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's wow. one out of every four kids are, you know, don't get a meal or, or mm -hmm. whatever it is. And, and, and a lot of times they don't have, they can't control that. You know, what I mean, it's not their fault. What are they going to do? These kids are, you know, six, seven, eight years old, you know, younger than that. And that's it's not their fault, man. So it, I think a big thing is when you're able to do these things, um, not only are you helping the kids, but you're you, like we talked about, you're planting a seed in the back of their head. You know, you're inspiring and motivating them like, all right, like, damn, I mean, he did this for me. I could do it for somebody else. You know what I mean? So, you the world. Know, I, Joe, I've seen kids 
you know, be a part of, of the camps or, you know, be a part of the turkey drives or, you know, me giving to one of these kids a, a, a turkey dinner, come back, be a part of the camp and, and, and want to, you know, help out and be involved in the next turkey drive, handing them out. I, I just gave you a turkey yeah. drive. Now they coming back the next year wanting to hand them out and helping. And that's, that's mm -hmm. what it's about, man. Like that's, and, and for me, Joe, like, yeah, it's cool to have a lot of money. <clears throat> You know, it provides resources and opportunities, but I, I think the biggest thing is in, in life. The big, the, for me, like being successful is being able being able to help out other people. You know what I mean? 100%. Being able to inspire and motivate other people and connect other people to, uh, you know, to do what we're trying to do. Like even me and you just speaking on it right now, you know, we put it out into the universe. We put it out into the world and hopefully, you know, other people yeah. hear it and, 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 you know, want to, you know, do it, you know, themselves. Like I know one, you know, shout out Matt Govendo, elite wealth management. Um, you know, he's always there shout supporting, but you know, he, he's a guy that, you know, he, he texts me and I remember, Hey, he, he'd be like, Hey, I'm doing a, I'm collecting a, a gloves and bats. Um, and for, for kids in the inner city who, you know, these kids never had, you know, new gloves or cleats yeah. or bats, you know, he's collecting them. And then now a whole team has it now. Now it's a, you know, these kids have an opportunity to play baseball that they never thought they would have had just because of, mm -hmm. you know, somebody who, who was inspired by what we may have done. Uh, he goes out and, and, and does it himself. So, um, it, you know, it's a lot of those people in the community. And I think, too, Joe, everyone wants to help out, right? They just, they don't know how. Like, they don't know, you know, how can I do it? And the biggest thing I learned from it is just do it, take action. You know what I mean? Regardless if you're, you know, helping one person or you're helping a hundred people, like that's going to go a long way. You know what I mean? Cause that one person that you helped, you know, it, it could go on to somebody else. And it's, it's like a chain effect, right? It's a, it's a, yeah, it's, it's it's a trickle down effect. Is. But you so know, that's one thing I want to highlight right? one thing. One or the other. So that's the biggest thing for sure. Another huge thing is when you're doing these things, Make sure you're doing it with pure intent and a good heart. Don't do it because you're going to want something in return. Because then you're not, your heart's not in the right place. Like when you're helping somebody, don't do it so that you could be, you know, glorified and people could praise your name. Uh, like I'm cool without that. Just knowing what I'm doing is enough for me to go on and me seeing the change in the community or you seeing the change in the community. You bring up, you know, a kid who was part of the turkey drive. You were you receiving now he wants to hand out that's you changing a, a young a shaping a young mind to know that regardless of my situation because you know at the end of the day bro and and i know we, we haven't been talking q sports yet people shout out to the we'll first time we're we'll we'll we talking we talk real shit right now this is real shit yeah but those kids you're you know you're shaping their mind because at the end of the day bro when you wake up hungry when you have no lunch when you go to school you wake up angry you wake up upset you wake yeah. up upset at the world. You wake up upset at the government, the police, your parents, your uncle. You wake up upset because you're hungry. You wake up upset. A kid has a new pair of shoes. Now you're going to go try to get on him because fuck it. Like, I'm, I'm jealous. I'm mad that I don't have that. But with people helping, bro, like you, what you're doing and changing their mind to say, you know what? Like, there's some really good people in the world. Like, it's okay that I'm less fortunate right now, but with a change of mindset, could change your life you know what i mean so, Man, I, I, what, so I, what i like real. what i like to like what i seen was um a, a quote that said we cannot become what we want if we remain who we are you know what i'm saying so it's like if you want to be something like and you stay in this bubble of being mad and like upset at the world you're never going to change you know what i'm saying so it's just amazing, bro. It's amazing work what you're doing. Amazing work. And I, I, I done told you a million times, bro, but I'm proud of you. And I still think that that, what's his name? My boy need to give you the key. But he, he hasn't done it yet. But I'm telling you, you deserve, <laughs> you deserve something, man. And I know you're doing it. And I know you don't care about that stuff. And I know that for no. a fact. But just know, bro, like people are, are, are seeing it. People respect it, obviously. I'm sure you receive a bunch of messages. Um, people yeah. thanking you. And that's what it's about, bro. That's what it's about. Yeah, no doubt. And, and I mean, bro, the community, the Syracuse community, I mean, you know, me and you know more than anyone, bro, just the love that you get just from playing ball, because I could put a ball mm -hmm. in, the, in the basket pretty good. I did a pretty good job of putting the ball in the basket. I can pretty, still pretty, do yeah, it pretty, pretty, pretty good, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, just, just, 
just off of that, Joe, like you, you showing me that much love. Like I, I never been a part of a community that, you know, shows that much love just because of that. You know what I mean? So, so the platform yeah. that I have, I'm able to go do things like this and get it out there a little bit more. And people know my name. And, and like you said, we're not doing it because I need that glorification or, uh, or, or I'm trying to boost my ego. It, I put it out there so others can see what we're doing so they could do it and, and, and they could be motivated and inspired to, to do the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, we could keep it. I know there's tons of people out in the community doing it that people wouldn't know that they're doing it. And you know what I mean? And they're not putting it out there, but I'm doing it. So people could see it and want to help out and make it bigger, impact more people. That That's the whole thing. Like, why not? Why wouldn't yeah. we want to put it out there and, and try to help more people and, uh, and and make a difference in our community? So shout out to, you know, the Syracuse community, everybody who, uh, you know, supports, help out, gives a dollar to, you know, what we're trying to do. Like, you know, that doesn't go unnoticed. That goes a long way. Um, and, and we're going, man. We're going to keep doing that. So, um, but, yeah, that's that's – uh you know, we we uh, went on our little uh, 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 rant about about doing that. Now let's let's give the people what they want. You know what I mean? We we want to talk a little. Uh, <laughs> is, it, is this why you are here? <laughs> what are you saying? In the gladiator? <laughs> <laughs> are you not entertained? <laughs> but uh, game versus LSU, Joe. I mean, I, for me, probably the best game um, that they played all year in the short season. Uh, you know, five and two, seven games, obviously. Um, coming from Maui, I, you know, and they were one and two in Maui. They beat a Shamanad team that, you know, wasn't – we knew they weren't going to be able to compete with Cuse. Yeah. Uh, but, the, but even the first two games, um, you know, against some top teams, I think these guys were right there. They were competing, even though sometimes the score doesn't, you know, show that, you know, losing by double digits. Yeah, exactly. Both games, you know, it got down to – and I watched it in the studio with Paulie and, and, and Brian and Jordan – um, those games came down to, you know, five minutes, we're down nine or, you know, three minutes we were right there. And then, you know, a, a mistake turns into two and three and it kind of just snowballs, yeah. you know, then you got a foul and, um, you know, now, it, now the score looks a little bit, um, you know, misleading, but I, I think that those guys competed. Um, and we talked about it, you know, off camera. I mean, bro, you look at the roster, these guys are talented, dude. They got some pieces, yeah. bro. Like from like, you know, Red's playing nine, ten guys, nine guys. They got, yeah. they got talent. I mean, obviously, the head of the snake is Judah Mintz, who, excuse me, had a, had a career high yesterday, uh, thirty three points. You see Chris Bell um, coming on in the second half at six threes, twenty points. They combined for for fifty three. And I know JJ didn't have a great game, but uh, you know, I, I went into the locker room and, and told him after the game because I was able to go to the game and watch. Bro, you can't get down on yourself because you're not scoring a lot of points. Like, this is the first time that I think uh, in his career for real that he's coming up being like a point guard. Like, he, he's handling the ball. Yeah, he's he's making ball. decisions. He, yeah, you know what I mean? He's allowing Judah to, to get off the ball and, and um, really do what he does, and that's be a scorer. You know what I mean? He, I mean last yeah. night we see. We seen Judah Mintz. He was in, in in full effect. Like guys can't stay in front of him, and you know when he's able to get to the rim and get by his defender like that, it just opens up everything. Um, and, and we talked about Chris Bell hitting six threes. And Chris, if you're able to knock down that thing like that, you helping everybody out. You helping Dang. JJ and Judah, um, you know, with the driving lanes and, and, and the angles. Yeah. But because they can't help off. Think, yeah, they can't. They can't. My, so I guess my overall, um, you know, look at the game was. You know, the first half was a little bit shaky, but the second half, like, you know, these guys came out, they played D. I think they had nine blocks or eight blocks, they had nine steals. Um, you know, they rebounded the basketball. They out-rebounded a bigger team. Yeah, LSU missed a lot of shots. They might not have played as as well as, uh, you know, they could have, but who, who the fuck's fault is that? Motherfucker, you coming, you, right. you, you coming into the dome and, and you playing shit. I ain't about to be saying, oh, yeah, we won because they fucking played bad. Well, yeah, motherfucker, that's nah. how it goes. So, you know what I right. mean? So I think yep. overall defense and rebounding, um, you know, Judah Mintz, Chris Bell, uh, did outstanding job in the second half. And, and Joe, man, I like what I'm seeing from this team. And, and, and with, with Coach Red, I, you know, I'm 100%. looking at him on the I'm looking at him on the sideline. He, you know, he getting up and down. He, you know, he he, yeah, he yelling, yeah. he involved, he engaging. He, he, you know, even you know, uh, he turning around, looking at the bench, like you know, at one particular point, he's like, "Motherfucker, this is what you got to do." Like talking to you know, talking to the guys yeah, who, who are not yeah. even in the game, like. 
he and and shout out Red because he's a players coach. You know, he's he's a he's a guy that 100. The doors open. You could go there and talk to him about anything, and, and I think that's why he's going to be such a successful head coach. Is because he can mm-hmm. relate to the players. Players want to play for him. They're going to play hard for him. They're going to oh, compete. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's going to be times where it's up and downs and, and, and people are going to question shit. Why did you sub this? Why did you do that? That's a part of the fucking game. My man trying to figure out the rotation. Yeah. Who can 100%. be successful? It's, it's, true. it's still early. It's early, bro. It's early. And, and, and bro, early. let's get this. LSU might not be at the top of the SEC, but that's a good team, man. That's a solid team. Very that's a good solid team. team. Yeah. And Joe, I was at the game. Like I said, they're big as shit. That was a big team, dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, LSU man, Neutralizing Baker, you know what I'm saying? Baker averaging 15, he ends up with four, whatever it is, five. Like, did a good job, man, overall. Um, shout out to Red. You know, I haven't been able to, I, you know, I obviously reached out to him and, and wished him good luck before his first game and congratulated him after the first win. But this team, man, you look at this team, we got starters coming off the bench, you know, guys who could start on, on probably any team in the country coming off the bench. So we're really not losing anything when we make substitutions. That's my biggest thing is whoever comes in, you talk about Copeland coming in, you know what he's going to bring energy. He could pass the ball. He could rebound. Um, you got Benny coming off the bench. You know, you got Malik who comes in and does what he's supposed to do. We got rim protection. We got outside shooting ability. We got guys who could get downhill, get to the free throw line. You know, we on the topic of free throws, you got Judah. What do you, what do you, what do you make? 15, 13, uh, 13, 13 15, 15 from first. the line. 13, 15 on, from the man. line. He, bro, he's been you know getting I mean? to the line, bro. He's getting to that line and you know what? He's making them. He's making free throws. Um, you know, you look at his, his, for me, just all his numbers are up from last year. You know, we, people came in and he knew maybe the, the knock was, if any, was his ability to shoot the ball. He comes in, he's shooting 13% better. In this early season, part of the season, he's shooting yeah. that three ball much better, taking quality shots, understanding that, hey, I'm going to be out here for damn near 35 to 40 minutes a game, so I don't have to force anything. You know what I'm saying? I could let the game just come to me and take it, take my opportunities as they come. And I think he did a good job of doing that yesterday, just being aggressive. Okay, driving those lanes, forcing, you know, putting the pressure on the rim, putting pressure on the refs to make calls. And he did a good job capitalizing the free throw line. You know what I mean? Like, I liked, you know, I like JJ getting downhill and making plays. And like we, we discussed a little bit, you know, you might not always get the direct assist. You know what I mean? But he's creating that collapse in the defense where now they're in a scramble. When he passes it to the corner, there's an extra pass to the wing. Bing, bing. He created that whole thing. Yep, he created all that. So you might not get the credit for the assist, but you get the credit for the play as a whole. So, you know, in, in terms of going you going into the locker room, I think that's huge having, you know, you on site, being able to talk to these guys. And obviously, you know, if they don't know you, all it takes is a quick Google search at the end of the day to know <laughs> your background and what you've done uh, from the high school ranks to the collegiate ranks and guys are going to guys respect you 100 percent so you know you, it's not all about scoring this team we're going to click and you're going to have games obviously jj where you're you're scoring the ball you know well and you're getting and you're, you're making your threes because he had some opportunities right some open shots i remember yeah. on top of the key he missed like you're gonna those shots will fall you just gotta stick with it he's averaging i think what probably 10 11 points right now um, and, and I love I love to see him out there. I like that duo. I like what's going on. I like Big Fella. You know what I mean? He's changing shots. He's blocking shots. Naheem. He's dunking with his left hand, looking. You know what I mean? Like I like what he's doing <laughs> yeah. out there. <laughs> I like what he's doing out there. I really do. I like, uh, high. I like everything. On the ground. Yeah. He's like this. <laughs> Wemby. Is that some Wemby, some Wemby shit? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. He up there. Um, no, nah, but I like it. Man to man. We're playing defense. We're getting in the lanes. Um, we switch it up to zone. So I like the fact yeah. that we could go back and forth, you know, which is something that I expected to happen. Um but I love what I'm seeing out there. I love it as a whole in this early season, early part of the season. I think obviously Judah being a sophomore, we're not thinking he has the experience of a junior senior. He played so much as a freshman. He come, yeah. He's coming in knowing the game. And that was the biggest thing last year, I think, is just being able to adapt to the collegiate game. So it's like, again, picking your spots, knowing that you don't got to force certain situations. Now you can see it early where – yeah, he's getting to his spots. He's getting what he wants. He understands the games. He understands angles better. Just grew as a player, and that's just through all the experience that he was able to get. 
um, through play. Like a lot of guys sometimes have to learn on the bench and that's tough because now you come into a situation the next year where I didn't play so much, but I didn't see it. I see it, but it's nothing like being in that kitchen. You know what I mean? And Judah was able to get in there and then now you're seeing that you're seeing that his game has, has gone to another level um, in this early part of the season. Yeah, and then, and then shout out, you know, Malik and Justin. I know Justin didn't have a, a sure. greatest shooting night, but he did have two threes, but he had seven rebounds. He's been rebounding the ball at a high clip. And then, you know, Malik had nine rebounds in 19 minutes and also seven points. Like, you know, all, all that stuff doesn't go unnoticed. And obviously from a, a fan's perspective, it might, but from a coach's perspective, from from our perspective, you know, all that shit, we see it. It, it helps those other guys to, to succeed and have success in the game. And, and that's why, no uh, you know, I was I was talking about JJ, even though he didn't have a great game, bro. You you gotta know as as a as a player, like when you go from you know at Notre Dame, you know playing off the ball, he was a guy who was just you know in a situation to get like slash. a drive and kick, yeah, a drive and kick, right? Slash, pump fake, drive the back to a guy now who's on the ball, bringing it up, having to make decisions. That's just a big change, man. So like now he's yeah. got to he's got to figure out our. I got to get my guys in, in, in their spots first. And then, you know, when I see the opportunity to drive or, or shoot, you know, I, I could do that. But that's that's a big change, man. And, and, and like I said, that's what I was trying to tell him. Like, bro, you know, you know, get comfortable into in, in this role because you're making other guys better. Like you like yeah. and Judah had 33. But you helped him out because, like you said, you, yeah. when you get down, putting pressure on the rim like that. I mean, they got to focus on you as well. Like they can't, if, if they give all that attention to Judah, now it's, now it's your turn. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, you did a great job of setting guys up, you know, getting downhill. Uh, I, he, you know, he turned the ball over sometimes, but I, I think that you just going and, and being aggressive and, and trying to create, it opens up so much more for the offense, Joe. And, and you know that, man. Like, it's going to happen where you fuck up, you miss shots, you make the wrong decisions, but don't shy away from going back at it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, it, you yeah. offensively, this team, it has guys who could create for themselves and you have to be, you have to be aggressive, bro. It's, it's not going to be perfect every single time, but you have to be aggressive. When you start playing tentative, now you're making way more mistakes, right? Now, now guys are, are starting to, uh, you know, Second feel guess, a little bit, yeah, sec exactly. Yeah. Second guess, feel it. Go ahead and, and make a play. You know what I mean? With this team, to to really have success, and and I talked about it, you know, on the radio and and, and, and on certain shows, they have to have that that uh, up tempo play, right? I think that in in Joe, the successful Syracuse teams. They play fast. They get up and down. Joe, you you were part of one of the greatest teams in Syracuse history. I mean, you guys were like this, yo, like yeah, up and down, yeah. like being able to get out and play fast. And, um, you know, what, what that does is give guys more opportunities. It, it's easier to make decisions, right? It, it may be quicker decisions, but, you know, you get used to that when you're playing playing up tempo. And, and now, no, you know, you, sure. got, you, you got a guy like Naeem, you know, and, and you said it. I like the, how we're switching up from man to man to zone. Red does a great job out of you know out of out of bounds. It seems like they just go to zone right away out of uh, every time out of the out of bounds. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and we have the personnel to be able to do that, Joe. So, like in, in this day and age, I think you got to have both. Like you got to be able to play both, man. Like you got to be able to mix yeah. it up. Like what if they got a guy who killing you off the dribble, boom, 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 getting in the lane, driving, kicking, doing all. All right, let's switch it up. We're going to go to zone. Now he's going to see big fella right in the middle with that big ass head. He's going to be right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he, shout out to him. I, you know, that's my guy. But, but like, they got to be able to have, um, you know, that, that you know, multiple defenses. And, and especially, sure. you know, in, in Red's first year, I think he's just really trying to figure out what really works. Um, and, and look, man, this LSU game was – uh, was great for this team that, you know, not only winning it, but I think just from a confidence standpoint, like, Hey, we can beat legit teams. Like we're fucking good. Yo. Like oh, yeah, we got, no question. we got talent. You, you, you go on, on paper and you look at these guys. I mean, you go even like guy, like uh Chris, like Copeland or Quadier. See, I said, Chris Quadier Copeland, right? He, he's a guy who is, you know, can do a lot. He can, he can bring the ball up. Yeah, he can pass nice. it. He, he, do it he, all. Can get, he 
in the lane, you know, his his shots improving. But we have talent, man, from one to nine. Kyle Cuff, he, he you know, uh, he didn't play a whole lot of minutes, but he's a guy who can come in there and, and – uh, you know, change the tempo of the game, get up and, and, and really like disrupt the, the, uh, the point guard. Yeah. Like, so we got, we can, we can hit you in different areas, man. You know what I mean? I, I think mm -hmm. the biggest thing mm -hmm. for us consistently, what we have to do, have to play defense, right? You got to, that's, that's number one, got to be able to rebound the ball. And then the third thing that, you know, we've talked about a lot, you got to shoot. You got to be able to shoot, man. Like, it, it, we seen yeah. Chris Bell hit, knock down six threes. Judah had two. It, now, if we can start getting Justin Taylor to really – or Justin had two as well. So, they had – fuck, we had, yeah. we had ten threes, I think. Was that ten? If we – Yeah, if ten, if ten we, eleven threes, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, but, well, uh, uh, let me check with the – yeah, we had eleven – we had eleven threes. If we can go eleven for yeah. twenty-one from the three-point line – I mean, you're not going to do that every game, but if you if you can get into that eight to you know seven to ten made threes in, mm -hmm. in, in a game, bro, it's going to be a big difference. Where you know we're getting to the line, but what you do when you shoot the ball and knock them down, you just space the court out for what we're really fucking good at, and that's driving by getting by those guys, Judah and JJ no, getting down. No you know, because now, bro, if they help off, it's over. Bang, 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 bang. Chris yeah, Bell. Nah, you want to have those multiple down. threats. Multiple it's threats out there. What's that shit they do? <laughs> and they, 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 they got so many weapons, motherfucker. They're ready for war. You know what I'm saying? They got all type of shit. So, but, uh, I mean, I'm, you, you I like this. Group. I love it. I love it. I really do, man. Like I said, the biggest thing for me is also, then you got off the bench, Benny. You, you We got, we got, the size to be, uh, to play the style that we want. We got the athleticism to play the style that we want. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Speaking on athleticism, Judah, you know, great, great talk, play. Talk about it you real quick, saying? top 10, like, yo. Hey, come on, top 10. Dun, 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 dun. And hey, hold be, on real quick, though, be. like, he, I think the big thing was, yeah, if the outlet pass was crazy to get it out. I don't know if it was Justin yep. Taylor through that outlet pass to be able to get it out there to, to Judah. That motherfucker got up on that, and, You bro. know, and that's, and that's, that's, that's just a great play going into the half, you know, where you're now, you got that, 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 that momentum. That's a great yeah. momentum shift of a play. Like, you know, especially it's an and one. You know what I'm saying? He, he wasn't able to complete the, the three-point play. And that was his first free throw that he had missed for the game. In and out, it rattled out of there. But those type of plays are the plays that change the course of the game. And I think them yeah. coming into the Dome and winning in front of their home crowd after, you know, falling short in uh, in Maui, you know what I'm saying? Like, it shows character. It shows that, you know what, like, they're not going to lay down. They never – it didn't It didn't really disturb them that much. You know what I'm saying? They came in knowing that they needed to win in front of their home crowd and they did exactly that. You know what I'm saying? The first half was, you know, up and down. We had we had struggled putting the ball in the basket in the first half, obviously, um, with most of our points coming from the free throw line. But in that second half, that defensive pressure up, we were rebounding, blocking shots, getting steals, getting out of transition, making, you know what I'm saying? So that's the type of game. And, and if anything, you know, now they know, okay, like this is where we're successful. When we play like this, it leads to success. You know, and that's not going to be the perfect recipe and doesn't mean that you play that way, you're going to automatically win, but it gives you your best chance. And for them knowing that going in to now, you know, they're going to play um, uh, uh, Virginia. Virginia, yeah, you know, Virginia, you know, at Virginia you know, Saturday. So, so, Oof, yeah. Tough as shit. Very tough, you know, tough place to play. But them knowing what style gets them, you know, wins and, you know, knowing Virginia is a defensively sound team, you know, they got to know we're now, okay, this is, we got to get stops and we got to get out and run. We don't want to have to set up in the half court. We want to get stops, run again, put pressure on the rim, put pressure on the refs to make these calls and um, get some, you know, that, that being aggressive makes Virginia now have to, you know, not, they can't be as aggressive now that we're putting them in foul situations. Right. So that's something to look forward to on Saturday. And, and, and then we'll, let's kind of talk about Virginia game for a little bit because it, it, it's a tale of two different teams, right? To yep. polar opposites as far as how they play. Like Virginia is known as a team to you want to slow it down and really grind it out in the half court and, and make you make plays mm -hmm. in the half court. And, you know, Syracuse is a team that, you know, we want to get up and down. We want to play up tempo. We want to use our athleticism and, uh, our, you know, our guys who can create and then get our shooters out in the wings to, uh, you know, get open opportunities. So um, what do you think? 
you know, how, how do you think, you know, Syracuse has to go into to, to Saturday against Virginia? Because, Joe, let's be real. Like, it, it's it's going to be times where you're going to have to play in the half court. You're going to have to. I mean, Tony yeah, Bennett, sure. is, of course. Yeah. He, he's too good of a coach. He's he, he, The guys are too well coached, and, and they're playing boxing and elbows. Like, they're going to make you drive mm-hmm. into a defender. And you're gonna have to do what? Make fucking shots. You're you're gonna have to make yeah. jump shots. Like they're gonna they're gonna like yeah. when Judah drives to the basket, there's gonna be two three guys waiting for him, and and they're gonna say, 100%. hey, kick it out, and, and make a shot. They're gonna run back on defense. They're they're gonna rebound the basketball. Like so, how can we you know play up tempo? It helps us by rebounding the ball and be able to get out. And you know Virginia yeah, exactly. is the team that doesn't allow you to do that. Yeah, so I think in the half court, so of course we know getting rebounds, getting stops is going to be critical for us to get out and do what we do best and use our athlete, our best asset is our athleticism. Being able to use that, obviously we got to get stops, we got to get rebounds, good outlet passes. But in the half court, what I saw against LSU, especially in the first half, our spacing was a little bit off. There was times where we were cluttered yeah. up top. We had Judah in the in two in the, in the slot spots, and then we had either uh, a four or a five right there at the top of the key. So it'd be at any given time six people in that same area, right? So I think our spacing has to be a little bit better, and we gotta be prepared to draw and kick. You know what I'm saying? We gotta be able to. Yeah. Okay, we know how they play. You know, so now we got to be a little bit smarter. We got to be a little high and wide. You know, if we're playing, you know, the pick and roll, advanced pass, diagonal passes to the big, we got to play high and wide just so that we're able to, whether we're able to, to catch and shoot or stampede into a rip and get to the basket because we know they're coming and closing that gap. You know what I mean? So we got to, there was a couple of times where against LSU, we got a little too deep into that gap. Now we're in a position where now they're, they're there and we're looking for kickouts. You got to know yeah. one dribble, get off of it, pass, and make that defense move. And again, it's going to come down to knocking shots down. But if we could cause them to make, you know, every team is good for one rotation, and then they're okay for a second. But if we could make them yeah. get to two and three rotations, and that's where we would be, you know, real good and, and and find an advantage at some point through that scramble that they're going to be, hopefully, that we force them to be in. Yeah. So I'm I'm just, and as you're talking, I'm just thinking about, you know, some keys to, to really have success against Virginia, because uh, like I said, they're going to put us in half court. We're going to have to play in the half court. You're going to have to execute, but you're going to have to have spacing. I think you're going to have to screen really good. Like you got, you're going to have really, to really, really set, well. set really good screens so we can get that advantage for, because yep. we didn't need a guy to come off that screen and just get a trail. Now when he trails, we, you know, we could get in, you got to get the help and that's when you draw and kick and, and then we're going to yep. have to be able to knock down shots, bro. You know, spacing, set good screens. You're going to have to be able to knock down shots, you know? And, and I think, uh, you know, against a team like Virginia, yeah, they're so disciplined, right? So even like when you make, you know, one, two, three buckets, whatever, they're still staying in their shit, right? They're, Cause they're disciplined. And, 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 and he's drilling it. He's, he's, he's drilling yeah, Exactly. They, they stick to the script, but if, if you're, you know, executing in half court, you're setting good screens, you know, you're, you're rebounding the ball well, you're knocking down shots, it's going to be a crack in that armor. Like, you, you, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? You're going to have, you're going to start to see the opportunities. They might have to make a little adjustments that going from the, right here to right here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As far as, as how that help side is playing, because we're knocking down yeah. shots. Now, now who is that set up? JJ and Judah getting downhill. Exactly. because. They can't. They. I don't care who you got in front of Judah and Jay. They can't. They can't guard them. They're not going to be able to get in front. The only way they're going to exactly. stop them is, is is that help side. How can we? Is that team um, defense? Yep. Yeah. Is that team defense? How can we beat that? You got to knock down open shots. You got to set good screens. You got to have good spacing. And bro, it, and I think at every single level, if you have good spacing on the floor. You're you're just helping not only yourself but your teammates, man. To be because now the scrambles are a little bit longer, the rotations are a little bit longer. Exactly, it's that's gonna, it. It's going to take a little bit more time, and 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 we all know in in college basketball at this at a high level, man. As a shooter, you only need that, that little bit. You know, I mean? you, mm-hmm. you give me point five seconds longer, that shit going up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that's it's what you think of. You think of Bell and you think of Justin, who are really good shooters and capable. And then you, we have the pieces. We got a big fella down there in the middle that could, you know, finish there and then, and, and, you know, give us some baskets on the inside. But we have our two guards and we have our two shooters. We just got to all be on the same page, man. That being high and wide is going to be is going to be critical, <laughs> critical. High and wide is critical. And, and, and I look at, uh, you know, from a defensive standpoint, like, bro, we we got this squad to where we can really lock up, yo. 
Like we could, mm-hmm. like we're, we got, we got the capable, like I think early on in the season, like in, you know, guy, I did, so I did the game against New Hampshire, bro. I, I, um, with Matt Park on TV and, you know, I, Shout bro, out to when you. I'm t- sharp as a motherfucker on there, man, I'm trying, <laughs> you already know, so, but I'm going to be real, right? I'm not, I'm not going to be biased to win. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a Q's guy mm-hmm. for sure. You already know, but yeah, if, yeah. if I see something and you bullshitting, I'm going to call you out. I'm a, look like in, in Judah, mm-hmm. like he was playing Ole fucking defense, you know what I mean? Against New Hampshire a couple of times, two, three times. And I, and I said it on the broadcast and, you know, people, you know, oh, shit, you talking shit about you. Man, look, oh, I said it plenty of times. Judah, my favorite player to watch, bro. Uh, he's explosive. He's exciting. Like, yeah, bro, we, we talked yeah. about it off air. Like, he, he, he's like. He got that shit with him. He got that shit with him. He's, he was in, like, we, we played with a guy who had that shit with him. His name was Johnny fucking Flynn. Like, and, and yeah. we ain't, we, <laughs> we not going to, we not compare to Johnny Flynn. That man was on a whole nother level. He was on something different. You know what I'm saying? But. But, but you talking about we, charisma. Judah got the smile. Judah got the yes. you know he's he's he, he knows how to enter. He's an entertainer. He knows what it is to engage a crowd. Like he has the basketball part, and he also is charismatic, and he knows you know how to play in with the crowd. He's talking shit. Like when he's finishing, yeah. he's flexing. He's you know what I mean. So you, you he's making the, the faces when he scores. You know what I mean. You, I love to see it. I love yeah, to see it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, and, and, but going back to what I was saying about about um, mm-hmm. you know, when I was commentating, a, as a competitor, bro, like I'm not calling you out. I'm letting you know. I know you more than capable of doing a uh, playing mm-hmm. D, bro. Like you, you, you a lockdown defender for real. So like when I see you do that, yeah. I'm, I'm holding you accountable, bro. Like yeah, I'm, I'm talking no, about sure. you again, but I'm holding you accountable, bro. You, you, you nobody's supposed to be able to get by you. Like you should you you average you know, two two steals again. Yeah. You know what I'm he saying? He was sliding like he, puppies. He was sliding. He, he was, he was stops. sliding. You know what I mean? You know, people, Perfect. you know, people Amazing. get fit all oh, deep. I, man, and look, and I, and, and look, I ain't going to say no names or nothing like that. But, you know, Jordan showed me these comments on YouTube. They like, uh, you know, he was saying, oh, you know, he's talking about Judah uh, not playing D. And, and then they, they came at me, Joe. They came at me talking about, oh, Eric, were you, you weren't the greatest defender either. Motherfucker, I got 200 steals in my career, more than that. So, man, get out of here with all that. But, <laughs> so, but, but, but the thing is, like, you don't take offense to that because as a, as nah, a competitor, nah, as, exactly. as a hooper, I'm, I'm letting him you know basically, like, bro, you more than capable of keeping that motherfucker in front of you. Like, you, you, yeah, you an NBA people, guy. Yeah, exactly. And the, and the people should understand that when you're talking, you first of all, you would hope that the player in question, whatever, whether it be Judah at a certain point, whether it be, you know, Benny, whoever it is at any particular point, take the feelings out of it. Just receive the message and know that we're you played. You know what I'm saying? Come on, dog. You, you played in the same arena that, you know, they're playing in, like literally not just played at, at, at somewhere. Shout out to Lehigh, but I'm going to use Lehigh. You played at Q's. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You played there, bro. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. when you're talking, you're speaking from a place of experience and you're speaking of a place of no doubt. where you're trying to get to, that's not going to fly. You know what I mean? So yes, like you Come people on, can't man. get in their feelings. You're going to just be real and they should know you by now that you're going to be as real as it gets. You're not going to hold back. And when you're doing something good, you'll tell them, but when you're fucking up or you're doing something bad, you got to also let it be known. You know what I'm saying? It goes both ways. Joe, as a coach, I... Is you, is you, if somebody doing something fucking wrong, are you gonna fucking be like, "Hey, you're doing a great job. It's fucking. You, you, don't worry about it. You're, you, it'll work out." No, nah, motherfucker. No. I'm nah, letting you know what all. time not it is. All. It's for you. Oh, for sure. It's for it, you. It's We're for- doing shell drill yesterday in practice, and, and you know, shell drill is really for the defense to move and shit like that. But like, at the end of the day, offensively, make a crisp pass like this. Ah, they, they don't. Okay, hold on, hold on. My guy, don't tell me my guy went out. We got three minutes left. All right, so we'll see if uh, my guy Joe come back. Uh, real quick, I want to shout out our sponsor again, Flintstone Cannabis Company. Hey, look, man, we got our first snow of the year. Um, I know you might be in the house. Man, look, I don't know if they got delivery or not yet, but go ahead, get in the car. The roads are clear. Drive down to Flintstone Cannabis. If you're going to be in the crib all day, grab you something, lay back, chill, might pop you a little edible or whatever it is, man. 
go down to uh, Flintstone, get you get you right, and, and, and lay back, chill. And you might come up with some fucking great ideas off of that, man. You know. So again, shout out to Flintstone uh, Cannabis Company for supporting us. Without you guys, man, we wouldn't be able uh, to have the show. So we're happy. And, and again, man, we got a couple minutes left. Uh, my guy Chris Joe, he, he he I don't know, he's in Canada, so you know Canada's kind of. Oh, there he goes! Fuck, I was talking shit yeah, about Canada. Nah, nah, man, so. see, man, yo, I, I, I'm thinking the whole time. I'm thinking, hey, this this Wi-Fi doing all right today, and of course, hey, with hey, three bro. minutes left. <laughs> hey, I, I tell you what, though, Flintstone just got a great fucking promo from your boy. I said, hey, look, it, it's snowing in the queues, uh, the the roads are clear. You might want to just stay in the crib. Going to ride, ride down there, grab you some, hit your edible. I don't know if you roll up, roll up. Edible, That's all you probably you got some up. pre-rolls already. Hey, if you lazy, you don't want to roll up, just go ahead and get the pre-roll and you set. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, don't waste no time with it. Go ahead, pick it up, do what you got to do, baby. And, and, and look, and, and, and look, we, I seen Paulie put the Labatt Blue on there. I, I don't really drink beer like that at all, but shout out to Labatt because Paulie, I know you were trying That's to get like that fridge in there. Uh, well, shout out to LeBat, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, man, for real, Joe, um, just talking about, you know, holding each other accountable, you know, that's it. That's what you, that's what you got to do. And, and I'll tell you one more thing. Hey, if you motherfuckers want to test me, I'm strapping up right now. I'm strapping up right now if you want to get on that court. Let me know. I'm 36. I still got it. I'm ready to go. I'm in shape, young boy. Uh-huh. Uh, what are yo, you trying to do? Get to it. That's it. Get to it. <laughs> get That's to what I'm saying. I but, seen you in the ABA. Look, I seen you in the summertime get, getting busy against Georgetown. You know what I'm saying? Like, the people on, might not man. have seen it. I was there. I was there. <laughs> man, yeah, come yeah. Right. Oh, right, right. Shout out. Yeah, front row, motherfucker. You already know. Front row. But, but look, Joe, we uh, we out of time, man. Again, I, I just want to shout out um, everybody who listened and, and uh, you know, tuned in. Season three, we're back. Yo, Wednesday, 10 to 11, man. We, we having a blast, man. Me and my brother, Chris Joe, we, we, we talking shit. We talking Q's highlights. We, um, you know, you see my guy froze again, but, uh, oh, you're back. Oh, damn. What the, God, damn. That shit. <laughs> <laughs> but look, before we get out of here, man, again, thanks everybody. 10 to 11. We're we going to be back on next Wednesday. Make sure you guys tune in. And I don't know if they do bits anymore, Joe, but man, sprinkle that shit on us. Sprinkle we'll that be shit back on at it. <laughs> Till next time, baby. Let's get it. You already know. Season three.